Yeah, I know. I, I know what a mole is, but like, how am I supposed to know what a mole weighs? I mean, you can look it up. Like, there's different masses for different moles. Like, how are you supposed to even know? Alright, we're into topic 5 now. We're into concentration and units. And I know you're used to talking about grams per mole, but it's not that that isn't important, it's just that there's other ways to talk about units. So here we're going to be talking about a mass by mass based concentration where you don't even need to know the molecular weight. So we're talking parts per million and a family of kind of related units that work in a similar way. So I thought about different ways to convey what a part per million is. So let's just put chemistry aside just for a second and talk about a whole bunch of jelly beans. So let's just say I have a million of them. Now, how much is a million jelly beans anyways? Well, just imagine about like two truckloads full of jelly beans. This is quite a bit, right? So out of those million jelly beans, let's just change one of them. Let's make one single jelly bean blue. That's one in a million. That's one part per million. So that's all that we're talking about when we talk about these units of concentration. It's just a ratio. I could talk about parts per hundred, so that's what a percent is, right? So let's just go a little bit bigger than that. So a bigger truckload that holds more jelly beans. That truck over there holds about a hundred million jelly beans. So if I were to just put one single blue one into that pile, then we could get a ratio out of that as well. So of course that ratio would be one in a hundred million. But now there's other ways to express that. So if you'd prefer, you could say 10 out of a billion. So 10 parts per billion, right? There's a, just a different way of expressing these concentration units. And here's another way to look at it here. This is, this is home for me, right? So I'm, I'm from the southern tip of Nova Scotia. Uh, and this is a haystack. It's part of the tradition of the Acadian culture. So how many pieces of hay are in a haystack? Uh, about a million, okay? So if you put a needle in a haystack, you're roughly talking about one part per million. All right, so back to chemistry for a moment. When we're talking parts per million, we're usually doing this on a mass by mass basis. So let's say we have one gram, you know, a tiny little weight, and you compare that to this weight, about a thousand kilograms. A thousand kilograms is one million grams. So there's the ratio one in a million once again let's just get a little more specific so what mass are we talking about it doesn't have to be just arbitrary weight so let's talk about gold and say we've got like a certain mass of gold that gold in its raw form would be found in the ground so we'd have like a whole bunch of dirt so we could express the concentration of gold in the soil through parts per million so really you're talking about a mass by mass conversion. So it's the mass of gold divided by the mass of the dirt. What's a reasonable number for that? Just to kind of look it up. If you happen to have a gold mine, let's say that has a concentration of about 10 grams of gold per million grams of dirt, you got a pretty decent stash to work with. So that's 10 parts per million. So what we're getting at here is that you can kind of play with these units. You can convert from grams to kilograms to milligrams to micrograms. We've got all these different units and ratios. All I'm doing is kind of switching one to the other and it's, it's expressing the exact same thing. It's just a ratio of masses to work out that it turns out to be one in a million. So 1000 micrograms, 1000 grams, this right here is a ratio of one in a million because a microgram is another way of saying one million of a gram. So you're probably familiar with these prefixes here. So we won't go all the way down, but I'm definitely going to say, make sure you're familiar with that one, the micro that symbolizes one millionth, uh, just like milli is one thousandth. So just get used to doing those kind of quick conversions between milli and micro and things of that nature. So yeah, we can talk about parts per million or a mass by mass when we're dealing with solids. It kind of makes sense. But what about if we're talking about solutions? Well, we can do the same thing as well. So for example, here we got a bottle of water and it's talking about how much sodium is in a certain volume of the water. So there's a concentration hidden right there, 10 milligrams per half a liter, 20 mg per liter, right? Now, as long as we're talking about pure water, and that is important, or at least almost pure, 
we can talk about the density of the water. So we're familiar with the fact that water has a density of, but, well, okay, one, not, not really, right? You know, the density changes with temperature, but at least to one significant figure, we could say that water has a density of one gram per mil. So if I'm giving you a volume of water in mils or liters or anything of that sort, we should know the mass of it, at least if it's hopefully mainly water, right? So if the sample is really, really concentrated, like a heavy salt water solution, the density would be higher than one. So you do have to keep care for that. But in cases where the concentration is really low, we're in the parts per million range, the density is fair enough to say that it's one. So that's why we give you these equations here. So when we talk about parts per million, strictly speaking, it's just mass divided by mass. The mass of stuff, the things, the analytes that you're interested in, divided by the total mass. And then that fraction is multiplied by a million. But if we're dealing with a solution, and that solution is made of water, and that's really important, the, the density would be one. So rather than talk about masses and grams, we could talk about volumes in mils. Microgram per mil is just another way of saying micrograms per gram of solution, as long as density is one. I keep stressing that it is important. Likewise, we can do parts per billion. So instead of multiplying by 10 to the sixth for a million, we multiply by 10 to the ninth. And if you wanted to express different units, you could say it's micrograms per liter, right? So micrograms per mil, we just bring that up by a factor of a thousand. You could go on. So I could say nanograms per mil, that would still be parts per billion. All right, so let's work out an example here of how we could calculate concentrations expressed in parts per million. So we've got 10 milligrams of salt, sodium chloride, we'll dissolve that in one liter of water. So we're asking to express the concentration not in grams per mole, not in molarity, but in parts per million. So what we're doing here is we're writing an expression for a ratio of the masses. The mass of the stuff that we care about, the sodium chloride, that's our analyte, divided by the total mass of the entire system. So that happens to be our water. Now, should you be saying that the water is 1,000 grams plus 10 milligrams? Strictly speaking, no, it, it really doesn't matter because the significant figures on the milligrams versus grams for 1,000 grams of water, it's never gonna matter. So quite simply, one liter of water has a density of one, which means it weighs one kilogram or 1,000 grams, as you see right here, and we can just divide out the masses. Now, notice here that I'm changing units on you. So instead of milligrams, this is turning into grams, 0 0.01 grams of sodium chloride, and that's so that the grams will actually cancel out. So again, this is where I said you have to be familiar with kind of flipping those units, milligrams and micrograms and things like that. I'll multiply this by 100% just because I'm allowed to. It doesn't matter what you multiply it by as long as we know what we're dealing with. So this is expressing the concentration as a percentage. For parts per million, you're only making the change right here. You're changing it instead of multiplying by 100, you'll multiply by a million. So 10 parts per million. Is either one of them more correct or more wrong than the other? Not at all. 0.001% is the correct answer. It's just that sometimes those numbers are really small and it's easier to say 10 parts per million than 0 0.001. Okay, let's take the same example, but ask a slightly different question from it. What about the concentration of just sodium, not the sodium chloride? So you have to be specific when you're talking concentration, what it is that you're referring to. Well, we begin with where we were before. We know that we had 10 milligrams or 0 0.01 grams sodium chloride. The density is still one, so we'll say that it's 1,000 grams. Now, not all of that sodium chloride converts into sodium, so I have to think about the ratio. How much sodium is there in sodium chloride? To do that, we have to think about the atomic masses, or the, the formula weight uh, for sodium chloride. So if I had 58.5 grams of sodium chloride, or in other words, one mole, there would be one mole of sodium, or in other words, 23 grams. So you can actually see how this, this would cancel out. I've got grams of sodium chloride here, I've got grams of sodium chloride there. This is a place that it's very easy to flip these numbers upside down, but if you're writing down all the units on either side, it clearly shows where things need to go. This mistake of flipping those two numbers upside down is a big one. It means that you've guessed, you're not sure what to do. So make sure that you know where things go and the units will always guide you. You can cancel, you can cancel. So just to finish that off here, if we take that number and we multiply by our 10 to the 6, just to express this as parts per million, 
then I get 3.9 parts per million of sodium. Remember that that number is less than the 10 ppm of sodium chloride because we are talking about a different species. All right, so there's a lot of problems that you can deal with on that. I've just showed you some of the easier ones here, to be honest. So make sure that you're working on those problems and realize that when we're talking about concentration, you don't have to work in grams per mole simply because we don't always know what the molecular weight of our compound is. So this is another important unit you have to deal with in analytical chemistry.